Okay, so it's the 24th of June 2016 and um, yesterday we had a uh, elections day in the UK. It was a vote for the UK um, either in or out with Europe um, and the results are out. They're extremely close, 17 million for out versus 16 million for in and it was the highest uh, recorded turnout for quite a while, 72%, as opposed to just a month ago where there were thir around 35, 36% of the UK population voting. Um, so what do we think of this, ladies? Well, obviously, I mean, I don't live in the UK, but it was crazy because I would, you know, I was just seeing so many headlines and so much stuff happening um, I think we lost Rebecca. Um, so much stuff happening in the States, like every headline was all about, you know, uh, the UK pulling out of the European Union and, you know, the pound was going to um, drop like it, like it saw its highest point in the stock market in its value mm -hmm. in like 31, uh, in so many years. And then it, in, within 24 hours, it dropped to its most um, lowest point in 31 years. Like sort of where, you know, if I come to the UK, it costs me, you know, it takes a dollar sixty-five to make one pound. Whereas yesterday at the end of the day, they were saying that it's a dollar now a dollar thirty-one, which is unbelievable. Like it's unbelievable. That's, it's just crazy. I mean, I don't know. Um, they're saying that the whole U S stock market is going to crash and everything's going to be just like, you know, but, um, I, I guess time will tell, right? Time will tell. They can they can make up all kinds of assumptions and predictions and things like that, unless they're actually controlling it, you know, which could very well be the whole conspiracy theory, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the conspiracy. Um, but yeah, I, time will tell. And it's going to be interesting, I think. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right. And what's incredibly interesting is that, um, you know, just, I think, the three, I think the three of us would certainly just, just the three of us alone will represent somewhat the incredible range of views and opinions and in, uh, the, the level of awareness is yeah. there amongst people. Like yesterday, I was... Um, Actually, they're in the thick of things. I was running one of the polling stations. I do this every election, by the way, and have done for the last 15 years. And I observed some incredibly wonderful things, um, such as um, a lot of first young voters, uh, first-time voters being brought in by their parents or people, loved ones, to, and actually being shown how to vote for the first time, which you would say is lovely and cute for an 18 year old, right? But it's quite something to see a 25 year old being brought in by their sister or brother and saying, right, okay, so this is how it works and etc. cetera. Um, and then, uh, you know, I saw some really healthy conversations going on in the queues. Um, and I observed that there was absolutely no antagonism between people. There was just some really, really valid points that people were talking about that really the most, I think the most prevalent thing is the, the, the level of high emotion that is out there about this thing and that how the UK referendum was also, I suppose, almost just the smoke screen, I think, for a lot of other things that people are feeling very, very um, strongly about right now, including um, our current leader and the party, you know, and they're using this in order to express, look, we feel very, very strongly yeah. and we need to be heard. And that was quite, I think, quite something. But I saw some great stuff, real community spirit, <laughs> um, which was nice in amongst all of this and real yeah. bonding because this is what normally happens doesn't it big disasters or big you know yeah. heavy events happen yeah. and you see bonding on a level that you haven't done in years etc and yeah. out of every negative or potentially quite horrid or difficult 
challenge, you see some real nice things, don't you? And I love that aspect. Yeah. It a creates, real sort of human spirit. Yeah, and it creates change. It creates mm -hmm. change for the better, mm -hmm. usually, you know, for the better. Brings, <laughs> brings hope and brings people's awareness to something that they didn't, uh, you know, that they couldn't be bothered with before. They couldn't be stuffed about it. Oh, that doesn't, uh, doesn't have anything to do with me until the thing has something to do with them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. What do you uh, think, Becky? Well, it's quite interesting because Marjean said, let's talk about the EU. And then my computer said, your connection is unstable and froze <laughs> me out of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> So it was quite, uh, I think it was quite pertinent to, to what's happened, you know what I mean, with the, um, the, the, the us voting out of the EU. I think what's interesting about it is, like, I was pretty devastated this morning when I got up. I was like, wow, that is quite, you know, I just worry about what it means um, for a country in relation to other people in Europe. Um, I've got lots of friends all over the world now and mm -hmm. it feels like it's, it's kind of putting up barriers in some ways to me. But as the day's kind of settled, um, I feel a little bit more hopeful about it uh -huh. um, because, uh, like you say, Curly, change is always good and if people are actually standing up and wanting to be heard because i think the state of this country our politics it's just a it's just a shit storm it's always just fear-mongering and uh, making people feel um afraid to live in this country because we're going to yeah. get no you know the, the immigration and and all that sort of thing so it's it's kind of like it's been stirred up and stirred up and stirred up. And instead of people being apathetic, people have actually, like Curly said, come out and vote in their masses just to be heard, to have a say. And I think that, yeah. that that is a really good thing. Whether it's the right decision or not, it's the decision that's been made. But I suppose what's, what's really interesting about it is that it's, it's virtually a 50-50 split. So it's like, right, so, so there is this big kind of divide. Yeah. Um, and, and it's fairly even. So I don't know what's going to happen next. But I yeah. think a lot of people will be feeling a little scared, yes. you know, the, the stocks are going crazy. People will be worried about their homes. They'll be worried about yes. the pound. They'll, all, all sorts of things. So I think it's going to be tricky for a little, little while yet. But of course, it will settle down, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, because in, in reality, um, like, you had to become part of the EU in the first place, right? So yeah. it's like there was a vote to become to come into the EU, and now there was a vote to go out of the EU. It's it's sort of like oh, we gave it a shot. It it you know it kind of worked. It doesn't really work. Um, you know, wherever the country's singing, it's like half of them want it, half of them don't. It it makes things a lot easier, I suppose, for for some people. Um, you know, for half the population, obviously it made it easier. And the other half yeah. of the population, like you said, bought into, has bought into the fear of, you know, or, or made it so personal against your prime minister, you know, right? Yeah. It's like a, yeah. you know, at least you guys, you guys have a, you know, a system that, that sort of seems to work, you know what I mean? As far as politics goes. Yeah. Um, and it is kind of, I think it is, it's tricky all the way around. It's like, I don't want to, want to super get into politics and, and things like that. And, but knowing the general basis of what's going on, I feel is really important. You yeah. know, like how does it affect the dollar? How does it, how is it going to affect travel? How is it going to affect, you know, cause I'm, I'm a person like I travel a lot. So it's like, how's it going to affect me when I travel to the UK now? Is it going to be different or is it going to be the same? You know, it's like, I've sort of, when, when it first happened, I didn't really notice um, cause I was in the UK before the, the, the merge happened and then after it happened. So there wasn't like a huge thing like coming in through the border. It wasn't a big thing. Yeah. Um, but 
it, I, I'd be, you know, interested to see like how it, will it change things now? Yeah. Will it change yeah. things? And of course it will take time. It, it's going to take two years yeah. to actually change the whole process around. And I guess there'll be a lot of adjustments that, that take place over yeah. that time. But it's, it's big because as well, because it's, um, it's affecting other parts of Europe because all those other countries are now calling for their own referendums because ah. so it's like it, it becomes it can it could become very unstable mm. um, especially if those countries don't agree to referendums or ever so, so we really don't know what's going to happen yeah um, I, I actually saw a really interesting perspective um, from uh, one of my uh, previous colleagues when I worked in London. This guy's um, a young chap and he put on a slightly different perspective. I found this incredibly interesting. And he looked at the results based on age. Mm. Um, so, eight, the, um, so for the age group 18 to 24, um, 64 percent voted in 24 mm. percent voted out mm. now if you go to the opposite scale of the age scale um six for people aged 65 plus 33 percent voted in and 58 percent voted out wow. now what he was saying this guy was look it's all very well and interesting these figures but what i want to point out is the younger people that have a life, longer um, life expectancy, obviously, and, you know, therefore longer to live with the decision, all wanted to remain in, or a big majority of them did. And those that have less years, potentially, to live with this decision were looking to vote out, you know, and he split them down. If you say the average life expectancy is somewhere between 88 and 90 he's saying so this age group 18 to 24 64 percent of whom voted to remain in have on average 69 years to live with this decision mm. and of the age group that are 65 plus with this average life expectancy 58 percent of them voted to go to uh, to leave the uh, eu have an average life uh, expect expectancy of 16 years to live with this decision and i just thought that's really interesting perspective and way to look at the figures because obviously figures tell stories don't they and um and i think uh, interestingly enough the kids when you talk to the kids because they've had a few debates at, at my child's school and um and all they're saying is why would you want to, we want everybody to be our friends. We want we want it to be a free world. We want to be able to go wherever we want to go, and we want to help the people that are suffering. You know, they've got this compassion and this kindness that is actually it seems to be kicked out of people. The older they get, the 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 more that people seem to think about themselves and not the future generations. But if right. they, if those people were voting. If they were allowed to vote, and they seem to be the most sensible ones to me, to be honest, um, we'd have an overwhelming majority to stay in the EU. So, um, and we're making decisions on all the, those children. Yeah, absolutely. And this is what I was thinking. This is. Ex I'm so glad you said this, Becky, because yeah. I said, "What about the people that are younger than 18? You yeah. know, not represented, and yet how many of them are there and actually yes you could say for the very young child they don't have a particular view but actually the majority of children have a view and they really do care yeah, yeah. and that's a very large percentage of the population you know if we say between the ages of 8 and 18 that's yeah. a very large percentage of the population I mean it's like, yeah because they're different you know it's like they've come in to this world with a totally different consciousness you know mm -hmm. which is one that's more geared towards unity and oneness um 
you know, not being, and not, and not from a, you know, a, a, a funny woo woo kind of far out place, but from a practical, like, uh, hello, like we're just all people. Let's just all get along and, and do our thing and, and come together. You know, it's like, that's the way they came in thinking. Yeah. You know, not and they've got separatism. And they've got this cultural integration thing going on from the offset, haven't they? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it just is. It, it, it's, a, it's a multicultural planet. They, my, my child went on a holiday. You know, she went on a plane for the first time when she was five months old. Yeah. I didn't even, I didn't go on a plane until I was 17. Right. Because there wasn't that kind yeah. of thing going on. Yeah. But she goes off to Greece. As you know, my daughter's Greek, half Greek. Yeah. So she goes off to Greece every year and she's immersed in that culture as well. So she doesn't understand why there should be a difference. Yes. Yeah. She's just a person of two cultures and of the world, really. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But yeah, either way, I think um, Becky said it very, very well. This is a milestone marker of change, is it not? And um, it's great to see everybody really getting involved, I think. Yeah. And not just sitting back. Because I have to say, speaking for myself, um, I was extremely disappointed at the turnout just a month ago in the local elections to think, God, really? Approximately 70% of the country can't be bothered to say what they think when their government actually says, okay, tell us what you think about this. And I thought that was really, really, really sad. So it was incredibly (laughs) interesting to see. It was literally a turnaround from that just a month later. 72% have, 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 you know, gone out and placed their vote and made the effort and said, look, we care. In just a month, this is how quickly change can happen, and um, people can be galvanised, etc. And I think, um, you know, if we think about, I mean, we're, we're three three women from three very different lifestyles. We've come together with some, you know, common ground, and um, so in some respects, we represent that population in this conversation. And look at look at just in the short space of time how much we've covered. I wonder what conversations are going on out there yeah. right now, today, in the thick of it, yeah. after the results have been announced. What people are feeling, you know, what they're talking about at um, it's seven twenty-seven. You know, they're about to sit down to dinner or yeah. they're at dinner, and I wonder what conversations they're having. I really genuinely wish I could be a fly on the wall in all those households, and especially in number 10 Downing Street. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, around the world. Yeah, for, for those of us around the world who don't know what 10 Downing Street is, explain that. <laughs> 10 Downing Street is the house, the home, and the central hub for the Prime Minister, yeah. who has uh, following the results uh, uh, this morning, uh, tendered his resignation because he was very much for mm. staying in the EU. And um, so clearly there's some ramifications just there alone for that party and for the leadership of the UK. Right. Yeah, I'm just really interested to know, as I'm sure you, you both are too, um, what conversations people are having and what their views are on these results and how they're feeling the effects of these, you know, not just here in the UK, but out there in other parts of the world. Because we are one very small world now these days, aren't we? Yeah. Let's be small. And everything has a knock-on effect for everything else, doesn't it? Totally. You can't uh, make these decisions in, in this country and not, it, not expect it to affect the rest of the world as well. Yeah. So, well, yeah, um, what are your opinions? Yes, yes I was going to say, what are your opinions? Um, shoot a short little video or send a message, put a message in the box, like, you know, post your video and, and let us know, like, what's going on for you? 
like what's happening in your world based on what, what just happened in the UK. We'd love to hear it. You know, you can post below this video, um, your messages, your comments, you know, if you have a little video, you can, you know, pop a video up there or a link for it. We'd love to love to see what's going on in your world. Mm. Absolutely. And listen, look, seriously, um, whether you're technology au fait or not, whether you can do a video or you can just write something in, it really is irrelevant, your view. Uh, just want to know. And, I, you know, the other thing that interests me is when you first heard the results, were you thinking, what does this mean for me as a woman? Or what does this yeah. mean for me as a mother? Or what does this mean for me as a student? Or I'm about to go off traveling around the uh, uh, around Europe. Uh, you know, where were you? Where were you actually? What seat were you sitting in? Which hat were you wearing when you had those views? That would interest me too, actually, because mm. there's just so much that I would love to know. God, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> We could do a whole series on this with Curly interviewing everybody. <laughs> yeah. Something to think about. Absolutely. Definitely. So that's it for today. That is our conversation on uh, the world conversation, the most prevalent conversation, um, you know, backed up by the, the conversation that happened in Orlando just a couple of weeks ago. So there's big changes happening in the world all over on a, on a very global level, on a social level. So um, yeah, we'd love to hear what you have to say. And we are uh, Smart Jean, Curly, and Rebecca from The Power of the Goddess. We'll see you all later. Bye.